Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at thestarcitygames.com Modern Open in Syracuse. Brought to you by Ultimate Guard. I'm Nick Miller alongside Todd Anderson. How are you doing, sir? What's up, man? How are you? Pretty good. Now, the modern format has been taken by storm, or I guess by dredge in this case. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can't mix your adjective or your, your modifiers, I yeah. guess. I don't know. Uh, thanks to Justin O'Keefe, who uh, took down the classic in Baltimore a couple weeks ago. Uh, you've done a versus video with this deck. You've written about it. A bunch of the Roanoke guys are kind of on this deck. How good is this deck, and you know, where does it go from here? All right, so first off, I just want to say that since uh, Prize Amalgam was printed, uh, a lot of people have been playing this deck on Magic Online. Uh, the, the true innovation, I think, was from Justin O'Keefe, who played uh, Greater Gargadon alongside Bridge from Below. Mm -hmm. Now, what this does to the deck is, is a little strange, because uh, the older versions, you know, use Conflagrate with uh, Life, Life from the Loam to just make these big, you know, split damage, uh, you know, effects, which was super powerful and gave you this different angle of attack if your opponent was playing stuff like Anger of the Gods, a lot of Path to Exiles that could really, things that exile your creatures are generally pretty good against this deck. But Justin went one step further with Greater Gargadon, those are no longer an issue. If you start the game with a Greater Gargadon in Suspend, the Angers aren't going to do anything, the Paths are not going to do anything, and on top of that you get access to one of the most powerful cards a Dredge deck can play in Bridge from Below. Right. So the key difference between the deck buildings, are, and we've seen this a lot in the Magic Online results lately, is that there's the Bridge from Below Gargadon build, which you're playing, and then there's the Loam, more Conflagrate, kind of different build. What are the key differences in terms of like power, and what puts you on this build versus that build? Well, the, the Bridge from Below and Greater, Gar Greater Gargadon version just got me really excited about the deck <laughs> because it made it feel a lot like the old school dredge decks that I hated. I hated for so many years, you know, just the Cabal Therapy, make two zombies, Dread Return back this giant creature, make some more zombies. It feels very much like that. Not only do you get this really powerful sacrifice outlet, but it doesn't sit in place. Your opponent's not able to get rid of it uh, without something like Pull from Eternity or Rift Sweeper right. or uh, I guess like Wasteland Strangler, you know, one of the new Eldrazi's that uh, process. Right. Um, and I don't know, the, the Greater, greater Guardian version just felt way more like a modern or like an, an old extended deck right. as opposed to a modern deck, you know? And I'll, the fact that Greater, greater Guardian can also come in off the spend and actually present this other level of attack is huge, especially when your opponent is just struggling to try to keep up in game ones, and then they just have to also worry about this 9-7 that can literally come down like on turn four or three if you if you have like a bridge from below and you can just stack all your creatures. Right, you tax them so much with all the value creatures and the creatures that are coming back, but they've used all the resources and then they have to deal with this 9-7 out yeah. of nowhere. All right, so take us to the deck. We of course have our dredge cards. We've seen, you know, Golgari Grave Troll come off the ban and restricted list. Stink We Dip, Golgari Thug, and Dakmore Salvage are kind of your main dredge cards. Uh, but this deck has gotten so much from the new sets that kind of powered up from Insolent Neonate, Prize Amalgam, even the Haunted Dead here. Yeah, so uh, it, the Haunted Dead was actually Tom's idea, but it's not like it's some new ideology for the deck. You know, you want things that can come back from the graveyard and things that can discard cards, and Stitch Wing Scab and Haunted Dead, can, both those cards can do it. Uh, the thing I like about Haunted Dead the most is that it actually creates two different bodies, one of which can fly, so uh, it's a little bit tougher to deal with than just like a 3-1 flyer. So that is definitely an upgrade to what we did have access to before uh, uh, Eldritch Moon came out. Sure. Now, as far as like Insolent Neonate's concerned, the card is very good in the deck, but obviously if you're trying to compare it to something like Faithless Looting, it's not even in the same league. You know, we just needed more one mana things to interact with the graveyard or could put things into the graveyard. A Neonate fits the bill. It just so happens that sometimes you get a zombie too off a bridge from below. So back, you mentioned back in the day, these old extended decks, they got to abuse Bridge from Below with things like Dread Return and cards like that. Obviously, Dread Return isn't in the format, or it's banned from the format. Yeah, it's definitely so this, banned. This deck is doing the things with Bloodgast, Prized Amalgam as kind of the beatdown plan. Yeah, I mean, the, the older versions of the deck that don't play Gargadon and Bridge, their whole game plan is just to put somewhere around six to ten power in play in the first three to four turns, and then just try to ride that to victory since the creatures are so sticky. Uh, even if your opponent's able to lightning bolt them or what have you, you're able to just continually replay them. Now, uh, the Gargadon version is able to do that also, um, but on top of that, you're also safe from all the exile effects, uh, and you just have this different uh, level and pow like power level overall because you can actively sacrifice your blood gas and your prize amalgams 
to create zombies, and then all you have to do is play a land as a follow-up to get them all back plus the zombies. Right, you, get, you can just get so much more value out of the deck, have so many more threats. Yeah, it's, it's, it's super threat dense. Um, you know, this one might be a little more susceptible to graveyard hate after sideboard. I think Life from Loam is actually a really good card for the deck because not only does it give you an excess of lands to hit uh, for blood gas, but it also ensures that you're able to hit your third land to flashback Faithless Looting, which is huge. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact that, you know, you get to play more Conflagrate, so you have more stuff to interact with stuff like Affinity, uh, you know, just any creature-based deck, you just have more copies of Conflagrate, and the resources to use it is really important. Um, but this version has to make some cuts somewhere. And if you're having to make cuts, it's, I don't actually know where I would do it. This is mostly just an O'Keefe's baby, mm -hmm. and I'm just kinda trying to fumble my way through it. Right. Of course, we gotta mention Shriekhorn as the new card in here that yeah. works very well with Greater Gargadon as well. Yeah, I mean, it's just another permanent. It's, it's mostly just a one mana mill six, but you get to do some really cool things. Uh, you can activate it uh, after you dredge. Like, let's say you dredge six off a Gagari Grave Troll and hit an Arc Amoeba. It goes to the graveyard and puts a trigger on the stack. Now, if you use Shriekhorn or, uh, you know, like some other mill effect before the Narc Amoeba actually comes into play, if you can figure out a way to put Prize Amalgam into the graveyard, it can actually see the Narc Amoeba before it comes back. Now, if you wait to another point, the Prize Amalgam doesn't actually see the Narc Amoeba come back. So, you know, you have to wait a whole other turn or find another thing to put into play from the graveyard. Right. And that's the interesting part about this deck is all the little interactions that kind of just are running around that you have to be able to know. <laughs> yeah, there's so many. Uh, me and Tom just like goldfish a lot with the deck uh, leading up to this tournament and he was like, watching me play through, you know, some games against a no, like no opponent. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, what would you do here? I'm like, uh, I don't know, I guess I would do this. And he's like, no, you should you do that during second main phase, not during instep because then the prize amalgam won't come back. And I'm just like, duh, right. you know, stuff like that. And it, it was a lot of fun and I'm really excited to play the deck. All right, sideboard, you got a bunch of things that battle the hate cards, abrupt decay, we've got Nature's, Nature's Claim, claim. a yeah. key card we've seen. But then, you, of course, you're fighting other graveyards with the Leyline yourself. Yeah, but the cool thing about Leyline on the sideboard actually is that it actually shuts off uh, the negative effect of Bridge from Below. Uh, your opponent's creatures never actually touch the graveyard, so the, the Bridge from Below's never get exiled. So that's another thing. It's like a, a double. Sure. Uh, but mostly, yeah, it's just an anti-graveyard card. Uh, you know, you have to have something like that, I think, to, to beat the mirror matches. You know, I'm not sure if it's actually necessary, but maybe after this weekend it absolutely will be if the deck sure. is as popular as everybody keeps saying. Yeah. Other cards, we have to talk about Collective Brutality. Yeah. Another Eldritch Moon card here, Escalate. <laughs> so I talked about Collective Defiance in my article because I thought that the, the wheel effect, the discard your hand and draw, was really powerful in a deck like Dredge. You know, I've, I've tried out Tolarian Winds in various older versions of Dredge just because of how powerful it felt if you're able to just dredge like three to six times in one turn. But it's a little slow, it costs three mana, and uh, you know, the turn you cast it, you're pretty, uh, or you're rarely able to play a land to get back Blood Guest, which is a downside. Right. But at the same time, I do want an effect like that where uh, it's just this explosive effect that lets you do something uh, else besides just discard cards. Collective Brutality is just a messed up magic card. <laughs> you know, and it's really hard to, to explain just how, how broken it is because no one's really seen it like happen yet. No one's played with it yet. But in a deck like Dredge, let's say you're playing against Burn. You go uh, take your, your instant sorcery out of your hand. You go discard one of my, you know, blood gas, my bridge from below, whatever, my dredger, to kill your creature, like kill your idol on the Great Rebel. And I can discard another card to gain two life and you lose two life. Now, discarding cards is generally considered a drawback, but there's so many times <laughs> in this deck where I just have one or two cards in my hand that I just actively want to get out of my hand. And the fact that you could discard two cards for two mana while doing three powerful effects, I think is just an absurd magic card. And I really wanted to play in the main deck, but again, I didn't want to mess with the deck too much because I don't have enough knowledge with it. Well, you've, you've been messing around with it for the past week or so. You've had a versus video, written an article about it. The deck has been putting up a lot of results. It'll be interesting to see how you and the rest of the kind of the Roanoke crew does with this deck, as well as everyone else in the room that is playing it. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I, I haven't played my first match yet, and I've been waiting all week, man. <laughs> all right, well, we wish you the best of luck, Todd. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for joining me here on the sideboard. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in Syracuse.